Esther's brief presentation on mentored and collaborative techniques in e-teaching for the ANU University of Southern Queensland workshop at Australian National University, 12th of April 2010. I'm Tom Worthington. I designed a green information technology strategies course for the Australian National University, which uses e-learning techniques, and in particular, a mentored and collaborative approach. And this is a brief presentation about some of the points about how this worked. The Australian Computer Society, about a year ago, commissioned me to prepare a 13-week e-learning unit as part of their postgraduate professional program. So this is a course designed for people who already have a degree in computing. Um, they've been in the workforce for some years. They've decided they need further training to get a promotion and so they do a postgraduate course. Um, the Australian Computer Society identified a need for courses in the uh, green area, asked me to do it since I was chairing their green IT group. So this is part of a overall program which is accredited by national professional bodies in the US, the UK and other parts of the world. And then last year, uh, the, essentially the same course was run at the Australian National University. It was intended to run it as a blended course, having some seminars, face-to-face -face presentations, as well as the online internet delivered material. But really there wasn't demand for the blended mode. Uh, only a couple of students enrolled when it was offered as a blended course. The feedback I got was, they wanted a e pure e-learning course. So the face-to-face -face component was dropped and it was offered as an e-learning course and 19 students then um, signed up for the course. Subsequently, once they were enrolled, they then wanted to come in and see me one at a time or two at a time for help with their assignments. But they didn't want to come to tutorial groups or seminars or workshops. Uh, but in the end, it worked quite well in that slightly blended mode. Now, the reason the Australian Computer Society decided to have e-learning courses was essentially a matter of logistics, that as a relatively small non-profit body which has offices in each state capital, they couldn't offer the sort of learning facilities that universities do. So they used to run distance education courses using uh, printed material and correspondence. And a few years ago that was converted over to online material using Moodle and more recently Mahara software. But as well as that practicality, there is also the issue of how an online education can help with um, social inclusion issues as highlighted in the recent government report. So this can deal with exclusion from services. So uh, it could be used for young people not in formal education or training, adults with low educational attainment who either are formally barred from education or feel a barrier there because they have not been involved in that in the, pro in the past and they're uh, afraid of not being able to perform or being made to look a fool um, with things they can do. Adult literacy, um, the issue of academic uh, progress. Uh, one thing, and ac online systems can help with access to services. But of course, this all assumes that we have a network which people have, it's fast enough to deliver the material they, they can afford to have a computer, they know how to work a computer. So it assumes a certain level of literacy and access to services before you can have the online learning. The list of exclusions come from the uh, Compendium of Social Inclusion Indicators from the Social, Australian Social Inclusion Board 
uh, which was discussing what measures might be used to indicate how we're doing with social inclusion. But essentially what I'm saying is we can, do, we can uh, make progress in some of those areas assuming we have access to this technology, we can then use it, including for university education. Now, one issue in all of this is there's a perception that e-learning is done to save money and that it's an inferior form of learning. It's done because you're doing it on the cheap. Uh, and that blended learning is sort of a form of e-learning where you're trying to slip the e-learning in under the carpet as, as an adjunct. But there are some studies such as um, this one sponsored by the US Department of Education Centre for Technology and Learning, a volume of evaluation of evidence-based practicalities in online learning, which claims that um, at least for some classes, for some students, the uh, online delivery gives a better result on average than traditional face-to-face -face instruction and across different areas and that blended and pure online learning uh, result in similar outcomes. And that the sort of things we tend to get excited about, such as video, online interactive quizzes, uh, don't influence the amount that the students learn online. Now, all of these were a great relief to me because I took, in preparing my first attempt at an online course with the Green IT, a very basic approach to things using text-based materials which look like traditional printed materials with very little use of video and audio and no use of online quizzes. So a transfer of a traditional university course providing the lecture notes without the lectures, providing the tutorial uh, work via online text-based non-real-time forums. But essentially, at least this study is saying that approach should work fine and in practice it worked extremely well. The topic of the unit is green information communications technology and essentially the learning outcomes for the students match two major assignments they have to write and the first one was estimate the carbon footprint of ICT, computers and telecommunications, operations of an organisation and where the student is employed, that will be the organisation they work for. Where they're a full-time student, we help find them an organisation to do it for. And secondly, assess ways to reduce the carbon footprint of the organisation by changing policies and procurement and revising business processes. The interesting thing about this is the, there are two assignments which are the major part of assessment and they match exactly the outcomes we're expecting for the students. So we're teaching the students to be able to estimate and assess and advise and so to help them learn how to do that and to assess them, we get them to write reports and in several cases the students wrote uh, assignment questions which were official documents in their government agency or their multinational company which were submitted as official documents and made use of. They weren't just student exercises. So that seems to have worked fairly well. There, when I designed the course there were no identified ICT green competencies to use to define such a course and there were no green competencies identified for IT professionals. So what I did was go through the list of competencies in an internationally agreed framework which the pro national professional bodies are using called SOFIA and identified those which would correspond to green IT and structured the course to match those competencies. In many cases these also matched 
the sorts of IT competencies used in business management. And so they match something called ITIL, uh, which is used for information technology service management. Uh, so there's a strong correlation with those sorts of management skills. And then what I did was write content to match those competencies. And the course is actually structured into modules which match um, one module a week, broken up into sections, these areas. In terms of e-learning, the most, I think, relevant part of this is learning by doing. So the students write assignments uh, which are relevant to their organisation. Two assignments, one halfway through, one at the end of the course due, but in between every week there's a discussion forum on a topic relevant to the material they're learning that week and they're given questions they have to answer that week and discuss and that discussion is assessed every week and they're given individual feedback every week. So the mentored part of the course is the tutor gives individual feedback at a set time every week to the students on how they've done in the discussion and forum and more generally the collaboration part is in the discussion forums, the students need to discuss the questions they're asked and they divert off into things happening in their workplace and so forth. So that's the collaborative part and they are assessed on how much they do interact with each other and are given marks for that. And to pass the course, they have to pass the written assignment part and the discussion part if they don't enter into the online discussion, they fail the course. The course uses Moodle, and I found that a very effective tool. I like its text-rich environment. The online discussion forums work extremely well, the way you can have a discussion for a week with topics and questions and assessments. Um, the tools for the students to enter their comments are less good and there are some problems with that. The first time through I asked the students to use the uh, Moodle uh, web editor to actually write their 2,000 word assignments and that simply was impractical. The, the editor's not good enough for that. It's just about adequate for them to type short comments each week but too limited, so we changed over to just using a word processor to do that. But the system for online discussion, submitting, pr providing them with materials, uh, works fine. Uh, one way the discussions may be different to some other topics is I took the approach where I would set the topic for the weekly forum, ask questions, and leave the students to do the discussion. And normally in the weekly uh, presentation, I do not enter into the discussion myself unless something is going terribly wrong and they're all off track. Or, but generally when I feel like I need to jump in and correct them, one of the students comes in and gets them back on track. And I might only once a semester have to make a comment in a forum. This approach um, to education is discussed in David Lindley's paper on computer professional education using mentative and collaborative online learning. And David's the head of the Computer Society's e-education area, and he's the one who essentially taught me this way to um, teach a course and design a course. And it's, the, the unit is based on his approach to doing things. The other part of this is that um, the Australian Computer Society took a fairly um, enlightened approach to intellectual property and said, well, they were paying me to write the design the course and deliver it. I retained the intellectual property and could do what I like with it. So I said, I want to make it open source using a Creative Commons license. They said, that's fine. This then freed me to be able to use online materials which have a Creative Commons license in the course because I'm giving the course away to anybody who wants to use it. And the course uses online references 
uh, wherever possible. So in the notes, there'll be a short description of something and then the students are referred to go and read the original document. They simply click on it, it goes and gets a copy off the web which is freely available for them to read. That worked extremely well. You can read some of the materials yourself. Some of the material uh, was in a not very useful PDF format and I spent quite a bit of time uh, reformatting some of it to put it into the HTML inside the Moodle system to make executive summaries of things easier for people to read. Uh, but I think there's potential from the open source approach. Um, the course has now been run two times by the Australian Computer Society, once by the ANU and be offered again next semester. Um, I, it's coming up to the point where after running it again it'll be time to uh, review the course, uh, update the materials. I expect I'll add some more audio and video and maybe some interactive quizzes, maybe just a tiny bit. There's been disappointingly little progress on the subject matter of the course in that by now we should have had a uh, legislation on um, carbon trading and other areas. So unfortunately the uh, subject material of the course won't need much updating. It's still ahead of where the world is at. Um, apart from that, I think the approach of what you might call an E plus form of e-learning and blended courses makes sense where you prepare the material so in theory the student could do it entirely online, remote distance education mode, but where if the student feels the need for face-to-face -face interaction or supplementary material, it would be available if it's feasible to do it, but it's not essential. And I think there's a lot of potential for that mode. Um, the students who don't need it will never turn up. They'll do all the course online, but the ones who do need it um, will have the option. The presentation I've been giving you is available uh, on the web. Um, if you simply look for the title of the talk, Mentored and Collaborative Techniques in e Teaching, with a web search you should find it. And as well as the slides, there are extensive notes with uh, references to all the material I presented. Thank you very much.